very good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, whatever place it is you're tuned on to the Life Signatures Radio. Thank you so very much. Welcome aboard. It is another day, another opportunity, another day for another episode. This is a daily show focusing on the subjects of purpose, of productivity, and of resilience. It's like basically a virtual incubator for those three topics and if um, there is any other related topics we also handle right now we are in the middle of a series we've been talking for quite a while now maybe 20 episodes into this we've been talking about spirit we've been talking about the importance of spirit in an organization or we can approach it from the angle of injecting spirit or uh, talking about the power of spirit in our craft. Now, listen, if we're going to go deeper into this, we've got to handle very many things, and we've been handling quite a number of things. In fact, yesterday we just uh, came to a close of looking at uh, how your spirit, m- how you might know that um, the the spirit, the, the signs that the spirit in your organization is in trouble. Or again, we looked at the signs that you will know that the spirit in your organization is awesome. Six signs, we, talk, we talk, took a look at them. But right now, I want us to talk about the four ways, four ways of infusing spirit. Hey, in our pursuit, stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. us to approach the subject matter of spirit as the source of life, as the the motivator of life, the nervous system of life, as the nucleus of life. When you look at spirit as an outside force, something that needs to be appeased, you have already messed up. You've already missed it altogether. But anything that is worth pursuing has the element of what matters to it. It is basically spiritual. Everything is basically spiritual. Very many people go at different lengths trying to do different gymnastics, trying to appease, you know, spirits, so to speak, so that they can be in good books. Even those guys who have been introduced to God and they know God, they try to appease God. Someone, years ago, I was watching TV in someone's home. And then a preacher came teaching a series called The Characters That Attract God. And this guy wondered, my benefactor wondered, do we attract God? I mean, is God like a moth on a lamp and is attracted by our gymnastics? These antics that we try to do, they they kind of present the idea that spirit is way outside of us and way out of our reach and the only way that we can be able to reach to the spirit is by appeasement and by doing very many gymnastics and in extreme cases there have been unearthing graveyards you know shrines where human skulls have been found and so on people are trying all they they can to quote unquote get into good books with the spirit But let me just explain this in the simplest terms possible. Without the source, which is spirit, life is not there. There is no life. And spirit is not outside of life. 
we are not living on earth and then spirit is somewhere excluded no the reason why i am alive today is because the spirit inside of me the reason why an organization lives is because the spirit within that organization is not something that you're going to go out to be able to bring in So in talking about infusing spirit in our pursuits, I am not necessarily talking about appeasement. I am not talking about doing this gymnastic, this crazy things and, you know, so that you can be able to be in good books with the spirit. Have you ever seen someone jumping from project to project, idea to idea, and they never finish anything in their entire life? They start something and before it matures, they promptly shift to a a new shiny object that comes along. And soon enough, there will be even a, a shinier object than the one that they are doing right now. Let me tell you, the the people who do that, the reason is simple. They lack spirit. They lack connection to the spirit in each of these pursuits that they are involved in. They are engaging these pursuits at the superficial surface level and there is some level of permanence when it comes to spirit a lot of permanence when it comes to spirit because spirit is end to end we are normally told that before god formed you he knew our end all the days of our lives were written in his book before any one of those days came to pass spirit is not now and now spirit predates that's why Miles Monroe said I'm not pro-choice I'm not pro-life I am pre-life before there was life there was knowledge design for that particular life and that is the life of the spirit therefore there is a semblance of permanence whenever you connect with spirit that's why I normally teach people I normally say start what is worth finishing and finish what is worth starting so there is an enduring element of spirit that's why you need to stop all the traffic and ask yourself the things that you're involved in right now do they matter in the long run will they matter in the long run and the things that will not matter in the long run for the most part you will find that they are not connected to the spirit if anything spirit is eternal i can even add that it is eternal for the most part, you find the spirit is eternal. And uh, there is this, this, this thing. If you want to start a business, if you want to start a venture, if you want to start a project that is enduring, you will have to generate whatever it is that you want to from the spirit. Why? We, we, we discussed this some, maybe let me say 15 episodes back if you wanted to know the spirit behind something you ask the question why why are you starting this venture the answer must come from spirit especially if the answer is selfless that's just about it anything that you start outside of spirit is going to be fleeting is going to not last is not going to anything that doesn't have a why Anything that doesn't have a definite why that pursues it, that that buttresses its reason for existence, cannot last. So if therefore you stopped all the traffic and notice that you are not so emphatic about spirit in any one of the things that you're involved in today. I'm not a prophet, but I can tell you If the spirit is not there, it's temporary. Either the job will go, you get dissatisfied with it, you either you'll stay with it like the living dead, walking dead, just waiting to be buried. But there will be no life. There will basically be no life in the thing that you'll be involved in, even though it's having a form of life. But the life itself will not be there. It is time to reevaluate and it is time to infuse that thing that we are involved in with spirit. And if we cannot infuse, some things are dead or some things do not have spirit in them. Some things do not even need to be resurrected. 
Some things do not even need to be infused spirit. Some things need to be left alone so that you can find out that which you're supposed to put your hands on. Hands on the plow and you don't look back. So we're going to be talking about the infusing spirit in where there is lacking. What can, can we be able to do? See, origins have, 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 have a way of connecting to the spirit. They are critical to understanding the spirit. The origins are very critical to understanding the spirit. Why are you doing? Why? What is the beginning point? And at the beginning point, what informed the launch? What informed the start? How did you get started? What was the enduring motive at the origin of the project? What was it? I read an interesting story about this. And let me just share this with you and then I'll call it a day. Of course, I've already shared with you this. One of the brands in the United States of America is Starbucks. And their backstory is a very interesting. It's a very interesting story. And the, uh, the, the original owner uh, of Starbucks is uh, a man called Howard Schultz. He had a dream. His dream was to have a company where employees, listen, they are treated right, they are given good benefits and complete medical care together with it. This dream was founded from the predicament that he, this, this guy Howard suffered when at seven years of age his father who worked as a delivery driver slid and fell in a sheet of snow and broke his ankle. So one day he resigned as the CEO of this organization and whoever succeeded him was not adhering to the standards. Indeed, there was a, a leaked email. We are told that Schultz sent to his CEO claiming that he, he felt that Starbucks was being commoditized. I talked about commoditization in some episodes back. And he came back as the CEO. And the first thing he did was to close all the outlets of Starbucks so that all his employees would undergo a retraining a reorientment back into the spirit of Starbucks. Think about that. This man understood how critical the spirit of his business was. And I cannot even say the original spirit because the spirit does not change. Methods do change, but the spirit doesn't change. So anything that has an origin, its origin can always be traced to spirit. And the danger in life is that we always veer off. Like this CEO, this new CEO, we always veer off. Every time there is a veering off, there is a detachment from spirit. Death might not happen immediately, but death already started. So tomorrow we are going to start talking about what exactly can we do to infuse spirit into our pursuits. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.